You're listening to the Small and Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 133. On today's podcast, we are joined by the very lovely Claire Barker, who you may know better as Barker and Sloan. I'm really excited to speak to you. I have to say, Claire is a member of uh, my mastermind group, but I saw um, I saw her do a live with Vic from Equiboodle, and I'd seen the products at the game fair when they launched, and I saw the live with Vic, and I know that Vic stocks Barker and Sloan Equiboodle and was raving about it, and you were so good on the live. I felt like I was like Caroline Hirons afterwards. I knew all the things all at once. Claire is a complete skincare guru and has been, well, has dedicated her whole business to helping us outdoor people not look like leather, let's be honest. And that's quite something. So hi, Claire. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Rhea. <laughs> that's quite an introduction, but um, so yes, yeah, so thank you. I, well, yes. <laughs> It's true, isn't it? It's true. You can't say it. I can. It's fine. It's because outdoor people, we we don't always pay that much attention to our skin, do we? No, we don't. And I think uh, I, I, I live by the, the policy of the fact that we have one skin. You can't change it. You have it. It's there for life. You have to look after it. And, you know, and you're right. We guys are all outside all the time and we don't look after our skin, particularly. We look after our, our horses, after our livestock all that kind of stuff or after our kit, we don't necessarily look after our skin. And just because we're outside, we don't, doesn't mean that we have to have that leathery, ruddy look. Um, Cause it, the, the flip side of it, whilst we're out all day and, and what have you enjoying the outside, we also still like to go out in the evening and, or on our days off or what have you, and look and feel glamorous. Yeah. If that's the right word. If, you know, we've got mud under our fingernails. Absolutely. And the thing is as well, I think, I mean, I don't really understand makeup. I mean, I, I, it doesn't, it just, I'm sure I could be taught, but I don't get it. But if you've got good skin, if you like look after your skin, actually you don't need to do as much work, do you, to feel like you're presentable. If you, if the foundations are good, I'm not saying my foundations are good. I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, but (laughs) generally that's a really good place to start, isn't it? Yes, I think I think you're absolutely right. And I mean, I've come from. I mean, I'm I'm also so. Whilst I do skincare, my background has never been skincare. I've never been one that has trawled the the aisles of the the makeup counters and what have you. That's not me. Um, I'm far too practical for all of that. There are people that do that. I get that. That's fine. Um, and I think I came into skincare quite late in 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 life in terms of kind of realizing that maybe I had a bit of tight skin and I needed kind of something to relieve it or try that bit of moisturizer and oh that kind of helped or it didn't help or what have you Uh, and that's that's obviously way before I started obviously going into the cosmetic formulation side of things um so how did you get here like what was your journey before you started Barker and Sloan so I I've done 20 years in retail basically so I was a retail director when I was eventually made redundant um and I was made redundant and I realized that I'd had um 20 years worth of the same conversations um whether that was in a you know early days when I was a, a, a an assistant manager in a shop um right through to that director level the fact that actually it was the same conversations about driving sales um how you present your stock um all at different levels but the same conversations and and i was bored of that i wanted to do something different um so being made redundant kind of gave me an opportunity to kind of see what else i could do and um at the time i was a hobby beekeeper okay um and uh decided um with, well i had rose tinted glasses on basically and i thought i'll i'll become a bee farmer that's what i'll do i will sell honey um I enjoyed being outside I loved doing the bees um and that's how it all started but bit of a fag packet working um obviously I've got enough business behind me to kind of know how to to run a profitable and a successful business did a bit a bit of fag packet working worked out the fact that actually I needed to sell quite literally thousands upon thousands of jars of honey to make a substantial living um one I didn't have the colonies um I didn't have the experience because I was still a bit of a hobby beekeeper back then um and uh, the, a huge amount of capital to start up with 
So I looked at how I could make a small amount of honey go so much further. Um, and naively at the time, I thought, that's fine, I'll make cosmetics because I can make that small amount of honey go so much further. Um, that was back then, obviously, that was a very naive statement because obviously I've gone on one hell of a journey since. Uh -huh. But the, the long and the short of it was the fact that actually I then uh, went on a cosmetic formulators course in London, um, learned how to, to work with my honey, my beeswax, work, worked really closely with the labs and then launched my first skincare brand, um, which is still going strongly today. So that's a, that's a very successful, um, well-established brand and what have you. But let's rush forward to, to Barker and Stone days and the fact that actually um, I realised that my skincare that I had initially developed, I'd, I'd moved on along from that I, in terms of the my skill base and what I was developing. Um, my audience, my current audience was quite limited in terms of what they wanted from me and I felt kind of a bit stifled, if that's the right word. Um, and so Bark and Sloan was kind of um, developed in terms of the fact that getting skincare really tailor-made for the, pe the likes of us that are outside all the time, um, but being really creative with, um, really with creative with the formulas, but also looking, and they're really ta tapping into kind of what I want to do as a business, to so be sustainable and all this kind of stuff, which wasn't necessarily on my forefront thinking when I first started so it's mm. so Bark and Stone is kind of a culmination of my all my years worth of experience to but really tailor-made to to us outdoorsy folk and when you say obviously you've got an, ex an existing successful skincare brand and then you've launched Barker and Sloan and you said obviously you you formulate it specifically for people outdoors so what's the difference what we're we going to get from Barker and Sloan because I know you've got different like oils and all sorts in them and also i know that some of them are the byproducts of other things aren't they yes yeah so the, the, the start with the, the the technical side of the products that we're using for or we make for Barker and Sloan that are really tailor made for um how your skin reacts to um the weather so um we i use things like um tomato seed oil for example which is a uh, really great for um, stealing moisture into the skin, really nutritional. So I work on that nutritional benefit for your skin. Um, things that stop transepidermal water loss, which means losing moisture. So things that can seal moisture into the skin. And all those kind of things are really important for us that are outside. Um, but also being able to, to segregate the product. So um, protecting ingredients to start with, so things like red raspberry seed oil, really fabulous for, for preparing the skin for the elements and, and, and going outside. But then putting those in the day moisturiser, but in the evening moisturiser, working on something a little bit heavier that's not there to protect, but there to really nourish and repair and rejuvenate. So different, different oils and different ingredients to, to, to work differently from there. The other side of it is the fact that we want things to look good on our skin. So um, a night cream, for example, no one's going to really see you in the night. You're not going to go outside. So it doesn't matter if it has a little bit of a, a shine to it. Um, or it's a little heavier on the skin because you're not going to put makeup on top or anything like that. Whereas a day moisturiser uh, really needs to be, gives you a nice finish, um, mm. a flawless finish, gives you a nice texture on the skin. So if you wanted to apply makeup, you could do, but it's also good without makeup. So you then use different ingredients to kind of work in those different scenarios as well. I hadn't even thought of that, you know. I thought about obviously that you have different things in it that, that do different things, but about, you know, obviously you don't need necessarily need something that's going to stop your skin losing moisture when it's being battered by the elements in a night cream or that you need a non shiny finish in the day, but actually doesn't matter at night. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning today. Um, <laughs> um, no, I love it. I think it's really interesting. And actually it really shows the thought that goes behind your, you know, your products and why they're really designed for people who, are are outdoors z um now obviously i know that being sustainable is really important to you and i know one of the things is obviously you some of the oils that you use not because you choose them because they're a byproduct because you wouldn't kind of think oh i should put something in this oh i know that'll do but that that aspect is really important isn't it? the sustainability so how did you kind of go about developing that 
that right that that was that was quite a quite a journey and it continues to be a journey because the more products we uh we are developing behind the scenes that is really part of that and uh, that product development about kind of not what only do we want the the product to do but then where where are those oils coming from and are are they sustainable can we get hold of them where are they traveling from etc so the first thing is the fact that most of our oils are um from well most of them are quite local actually um they're all from britain so um we we work really closely with some local british farmers so british oils from british farmers is one of my taglines and that we, I think we're probably one of the only skincare brands that really focuses on that. And um, we get lots of exposure on the back of that. And I think that makes us really unique. Um, and my white poppy seed oil, for example, in the day moisturizer or the daily defender, that comes from literally, it's, it's like 17 miles down the road. It's incredible. It's amazing. Um, so not only are we kind of, we've got the, the, the air miles or the food miles that have been reduced, um, but also, you're right, we, you've mentioned about the byproduct side of things, but the things like red raspberry seed oil, cucumber seed oil, um, they are, those seeds are generally discarded, they're part of the, um, the food industry, they're discarded, um, but the likes of us, we get them so, uh, cold pressed and then we use them in, in the product, so it's, there's nothing goes to waste, there's absolutely everything's used, and I'm really quite passionate the fact that we do that all the way through, so that every ingredient that we use has a has a sustainability story behind it mm -hmm. um and even the um eco marine algae that we use for um or the marine algae algae that we use for the day moisturizer um is done in a is actually grown in a eco facility on the edge of the coast so um it's not harvested at the wrong time of the year that then destroys the the eco balance of the ocean or the seafront etc so really keen for that whole story of every ingredient we use to kind of go through that's really cool because you don't you don't necessarily think about well obviously you do because it's your job but um, yeah, if you go to the shop and you buy a tub of moisturizer you don't necessarily think actually of where each of those ingredients has have come from and then what knock-on effect getting that ingredients had in the product because you i think we i know i kind of naively assume that people like try and do the right thing but not not always not always quite so much and i think one of those things is probably animal testing as well and the testing yeah. of products because again i was really shocked a while ago i was speaking to someone who told me that some horse products are tested on animals so like a, a shampoo a horse shampoo would be tested on animals and you're sat there thinking how is it right that one animal gets to, you know, have a nice, you know, have a nice wash and look shiny and another one is having the most horrific existence because of the shiny horse? It just doesn't work for me. So what's your kind of take on that? Oh, I, no, I totally agree. And it, the, the good thing about uh, cosmetic or the cosmetic world under the, the, the recent um, legislation that came out is the eu legislation actually it's 2013 so it's not that recent is it really but um that is, that actually has banned um animal product testing so which has been great so that's within the eu but if we were to sell to china for example and i have no intentions of doing so um they stipulate as one of their 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 things that they test their your products on animals um so that but there's a movement to try and get that eradicated but i'm absolutely against animal testing there's no need for it um and i think the that probably brings me back to that down to my other point the fact that everything we use is 100 percent natural it's all um in most cases is food grade um even the emulsifiers we use they use them in vegan ice creams for example so it's all oh, wow. um it, it, it's all food grade i don't suggest you eat it because it will all taste like soap it won't yeah. taste very nice at all in any way shape or form but it's all natural so um yeah and it doesn't have to it, it doesn't have to be tested through i just know animal testing i'm absolutely anti against completely um now we're actually in the process of um applying for our leaping bunny um certification which kind of eventually we'll be able to put that on our labels but um every ingredient that we use and the suppliers we use um no animal testing has ever been done on those particular ingredients um and then that's the other side of it so my products haven't been tested but if i use a particular oil has that been tested um and that's the 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 behind the scenes thing that sometimes goes on i don't, i can confirm that none of that happens in in the stuff we use but again because i'm not i'm not buying foreign ingredients if i was buying 
ingredients from China and what have you, do you know what? It would have been tested. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a bit of a minefield. And it's something that as a producer, I have very strong ethics on that and quite a, quite a duty to make sure that we comply with that. But then obviously that doesn't mean that your products aren't tested. So when you mm. create a formulation, you then, how do you kind of test it? Because obviously I guess, I guess you need to test for sort of efficacy and like that it does what it says on the tub, but also for any kind of reactions or what do you, what's the kind of process there? So there's, there's, there's two, two sides of it. So there is the, um, the, 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 you're at the efficacy side of things. So you've put all your bits and pieces together. You know that the, the the chemical makeup of that you know how to, in theory it should work and then they give it to unsuspecting people as you know friends and family go here try this try that um but you work really closely with people that um, will give you an honest opinion because what you don't want to go yeah that's great yeah that's great if it's really not um so i have a very close network of people that that try um, things as we go. Sometimes we will launch a product on a very short run just to kind of get some custom feedback. Um, but before we get to that stage, we have to comply with a whole load of um, requirements from the, the cosmetic regulations. Um, so they're sent off to um, a lab to make sure no mi microbial growth, so you, whether we need a preservative or not in them. And that varies depending on which product it is. Um, they are safety assessed through um, a um, a series about how what levels of percentages of um, essential oils you can use etc so that's all then signed off by a lab as well so that takes that can take some time mm. um and i'll just give you an example it's a bit busy at the moment with the labs with the with the with the covid crisis going on um i've literally just had my hand sanitizer come through and that's they've had that for about four months it's just been i've just been waiting um for well getting on for almost five months now for that test to come through to go yeah that's safe you can use that wow. um so it's a long process process sometimes but it's worthwhile doing so well that's the thing isn't it you want to make sure your customers are safe and happy and yeah. that you've got all the rubber stamping essentially yeah. um so why did you did you just decide that you were going to go down this road because it's something that you're passionate about in terms of from the outdoor from the barker and slain point of view and then how did you decide on which products to add because at the moment you've got quite a, a great like core collection but you know you've you recently added a hand cream and you've just mentioned a hand sanitizer. So how did it, like, how did the idea come for this specific brand? And then how do you decide what products to add? The, I think that the, the, certainly with Barker and Sloan, I mean, with my original brand, um, the first one, it was a kind of, I did a bit of everything because that's what I thought that I needed to do, a bit of everything. Um, and I got quite an extensive catalog of, of products. It's too much, it's, it's very difficult to manage. Um, the, the, the messages gets lost in there because there's everything from shampoos through to soap through to hand cream through to moisturizers eye cream and all sorts um so with barker and stone very much as a textbook brand in terms of how i should have started off with and having um and pinpointing a i wanted to develop a kit for the skin so a specific kit um that could be your kit that you could take with you um use it at home whether you're out traveling or whether even your in you know your kit bag whether it be your shooting kit or your riding kit or what have you but something that was quite um able to be travel or travel with you um so that's how it started off so we then developed the three products so you've got your day moisturizer which is your daily defender the 12 ball boost mist which is your facial re balancing tonic um, and you can use that kind of whenever you need it so for an extra moisture boost in the morning before or after makeup doesn't matter um, after you cleanse um, you can put it on before your moisturizer if you wanted to it doesn't matter um, but also the flip on the other side of it when you've been outside all day and you come in you've got that red um, really hot red um, kind of you know that that burning sensation mm -hmm. that really cools it down so you can use it for then as well so it soothes it's a big moisture boost it's a big um nutritional boost and then you've got your night cream that kind of does the job at the end of the day so that's your night cream um so um that was the that was the initial kit now in terms of the hand cream we never intended to do a hand cream i never intended to do a hand sanitizer not particularly but obviously covid has come out so we've um well absolutely so i know that you know you when you do use hand sanitizer obviously it's quite 
I, I want to say it's got 70%. You'll know the information, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's at least 70% alcohol, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's obviously it, it does great things in terms of like killing bad things, but it's also quite drying potentially, isn't it? So then you've got other issues and then it stings like hell to put the hand sanitizer on when you've got cracked skin. Yes. Yeah. So as you say, hence you then develop the, the hand cream. Yeah, very much so. And the, you see, there's, there's no, yeah, to get a, a good hand sanitizer that actually does the job. Yes, it, you're right. The alcohol just dries out the skin. There's no way around that at all. Um, and and even you know the the one we're about to to launch, um, which actually did go live on the website this morning for a pre-order. I've done nothing more with it. It's just it's secretly gone in there this morning. So I need to uh, uh, get that promoted or what have you um but you know it'll smell amazing um but it is high percentage of alcohol it has to do the job um but um yeah it's a uh, the hand cream does the other bit which is the moisturizing the protecting from a from a skin perspective not from a, an, a bacterial perspective but from a from a um from dry and that cracking of the skin and what have you the hand cream does the job just um just opened your website actually because i didn't know so yours is actually a spray yeah yeah i am denied about doing a gel and a spray um and the truth of the matter is the fact that or part of the truth is the fact that i couldn't make a gel that a natural gel because everything i do is natural i couldn't make a natural gel that um stayed like a gel basically uh, and the minute i put any um moisturizing ingredients in it it destroyed the gel um, or the gel destroyed the um the moisturizing bit so i had no choice but almost to kind of give in and go to the, the spray side of things um but on actual fact i find that the spray is less uh, less sticky Mm -hmm. um and it's literally spray and i think a lot of people don't get the spray quite right so it's about having a having a palm of your hand open spraying two or three pumps into the palm of your hand popping the bottle back down and then using that liquid to cover your hands okay. it dries very quickly and i think some people try to almost spray it at a distance yeah you don't get you don't get enough then you need to pop this tiny five pence piece worth of puddle if you like in your hand and then use that liquid it will evaporate very very quickly you will get that waft of the alcohol because that's the the bit that really works it's a reassuring mm. waft but then afterwards you'll get that get that nice uh, that nice um scent that and it's a bit of neroli lavender and peppermint in there so nice gentle aroma up to the end which will leave your hands nicely scented um but the key thing is it's got some moisturizers in there as well so it will help with that um that drying and that cracking of the skin won't be great because of the percentage of alcohol but it will help um yeah, and then yeah always follow the hand cream if you can without a doubt well that i mean that's exciting a shiny new product that i know exciting. i know <laughs> um, it's it's four months too late i needed to, it was but it's been it's been at the lab for god knows how many months it's been very frustrating but never mind i think it's still going to come in very very useful i think yeah, yeah. um I think actually though the whole obviously the COVID situation has I know it's changed the way that I view things and I used hand sanitizer before but I mean not to this degree and I think we're now just so much more aware I know I get I'm speaking personally of how germs and viruses and bugs are can be spread so easily yeah. um and actually why it is important to stay away from everybody but it, you know it, we have learned these things and actually using that hand sanitizer more and i think that'll be something that's going to stick with us forever to be quite honest um because it's been such a challenge hasn't it the last few months it has and yeah in many ways so and that brings me to to a question about what's been the greatest challenge in your business we, we've got a high coming as well like what's been a high what's been a low um but i think so you're, you're actually quite a young business as well which i think people don't under realize as much and because you only launched at the game fair in that was last year so august last year yeah yeah over a year ago and i think that when you start a business that is like it's hard but like you there's such a growth period there's so many learning curves and then so you had the kind of christmas period last year and then we came up and you were I'm, i know you were due to go to different events this year that's not worked. So tell us about what's been a real challenge in your business. Oh, well, this last 
Well, last year, 18 months has been one hell of a challenge. <laughs> and I think most of us can relate to this. So yes, you're right, we launched back in um, August last year, um, or July, sorry, for the Game Fair last year. That was our big launch. The first time we kind of showed our products out to, to the public and what have you. We were on a real roll with that, absolute real roll with that. Um, and then we had a challenge for our on our name. So the fact that we had a trademark was um, almost irrelevant we had a, a big company that sort of challenged us on that um, which led us to after we've got this real hype and this real PR and this real kind of like this role we then had to remove everything from sale um, for the for the, about three four well it was, about, it was 13 weeks so just over three weeks three months uh, whilst we sorted out that uh, trademark issue um, it did mean the fact that despite the fact that we had a, a trademark kind of helped us out but the end of the, the end of the day we don't have the money to to fight it against the big guys um so we ended up changing changing the name um which meant that we lost the christmas tray a little bit because we then we couldn't really approach retail we couldn't really get out there we had to kind of go really quiet for a number of weeks um and then we relaunched literally sort of um end of november and by that point it's almost too late it's, uh, you, People have committed to their, um, certainly in the retail world, committed to their their stock and what have you. Um, so we're on the bit of back foot for that. So, but we've we've done okay. Don't get me wrong. But we've it's about oh, yeah. put the brakes on, slow yeah. it all down, and then you know you're on a roll. It was quite frustrating. So we relaunched end of end of November. So that was one hell of a challenge. And then obviously um, we did a bit of Christmas trade, and then January, February, March times very quiet, and then COVID's hit. Yeah. So it has been incredibly challenging. Um, but I will say the fact that actually all the work we've done on the PR side of things, all the work we've done with um, Instagram, and we really built up a really fabulous tribe. My tribe, they, they, I, they love me. I just, I don't, or love us, should I say. They just totally engaged with what we're doing and they have followed us all the way through and, and our staunch supporters of us all the way through which is fabulous and they're the ones that have kept us going all the way through so i'm absolutely so grateful for that um and they will continue carrying us through so um so cove has been challenging yes we've had no um no events booked this year or we did have they've all been cancelled um we're just looking forward to a good christmas this year um and then roll on 2021 who knows what that will bring I know, but I do, I do think that, um, I mean, if you haven't looked at Claire's Instagram, like go and look, it is a thing of beauty, but what will also come across is, well, what I think comes across is that during the issues you had with the, the name, you were very upfront, you were very honest, not, not kind of bitter or, you know, um, I want to say emotive, but that's not quite the right word, but you were just explaining the situation as it was and how you were going to move forward. I felt like you took your tribe on that journey with you. So it wasn't a surprise. You didn't hide anything. You were very honest. And then I think as well, what comes across really strongly in all your social media content is that you are your customer, that like you are out there with your dogs. You are, you know, I know you're an active member of the Shotgun and Chelsea Bun Club. You're a proper outdoor person. And you also, um, I'm sure this morning on Instagram, I saw a post about the Country Food Trust. So you don't just kind of walk the talk and go, oh yes, I'm really passionate about the countryside, but also I don't really care you are like you are so passionate about it and your your customers are that passionate so i think you're kind of all drawn together in like a really lovely authentic i know that word gets overused but it all feels like proper not fake or put on and i think that's what has massively helped everything to be honest i i yes i'd like to think so and i think actually it's just it's just me it's who we are as who we are as a business and i think and it's not just about skincare and i think the the skincare is yes so that's the element that we sell that mm -hmm. is the 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 the, the thing that pays us but actually it's about the lifestyle so it is about getting out there and um you know and and you know the story the behind even the how we get our oils is it's part of that it's that whole lifestyle side of things and you're right and we are i'm really proud to be a, um, a social media ambassador for um the country food trust because again that follows mm -hmm. everything that we do and it just, it's a lovely fit but i totally think they what they do is amazing so just that 
where we can help out and help others and support others as well it is great but it is it's just it's who we are we're real we're there's no um falseness put up about it yes we sell skincare but it's about a lifestyle it's not just about skincare because that's only one element of what we do in our lives it encompasses everything else as well and also you know as you said you, you know you're passionate about the, the country food trust and you're an ambassador but actually through the work you're doing through helping to educate us all about you know getting more local oils and stuff and actually you're giving the farmers a m money for their waste product for a byproduct so that's got to help and you know, we know that farmers are they're very much the kind of blood that runs through the veins of the country um and i know we we're, we're in a very rural area and the farmers are just amazing around here the way they look after their animals i mean our our local farmer who if you saw him he's, just, he's a really lovely bloke but he's like a hardcore farmer yeah. he bought his lambs little waterproof coats this year they were oh, bless. well my husband um bought the dog or something came back and he went have you seen the sheep next door and I'm like, well, yeah, I know the sheep next door. And he went, no, the lambs. And I said, what do, you, what do you mean? He went, they've got little coats on. And I was like, oh, God. And you know, you have that moment and you think, he's, he's finally cracked. He's cracked. And I went out and they had these little, they, I did actually speak to him about it because I was intrigued. And they were kind of completely biodegradable. But just because the lambs were a bit little, um, all, all the weather was a bit rubbish. But these people, they really care about their animals. They put, I mean, he's out there all hours, you know, making sure they're okay if there's an issue and anything we can do to help support what's so important again i think this crisis the whole coronavirus crisis my god how like the farmers without them we would be completely screwed i know i know i know they are they're just amazing aren't they and i think actually they 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 often get sidelined they and they're not and most of them you know they're a lot of the farmers I know that, you know, social media, what's that? They haven't got a clue, have they? Let's face it, because they are out there. They're grafting there. They're keeping us all going. And, and I, you know, I shoot, as you know, and I am passionate about the fact that even the little bit we do, the fact that we kind of raise our birds, we look after our birds, we care for our birds throughout the season. Um, and then, yes, eventually on shoot days. And then we take them home at the end of that and we prepare a really nice meal with them. So that food is celebrated. So everything we do is kind of um, literally filled to fork. It's all the way through, but kind of celebrated and enjoyed and not, and nothing goes to waste. Nothing is discarded. Nothing is, um, everything is precious. And the, the work the farmers do is just amazing. I can't, I, 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 I always remember the one of our local dairy farmers, we were sort of talking about Christmas one year um, and his phrase was like, well, the cows don't know it's Christmas day. They still need milking this morning or whatever. It's like, God, you're so right. They never get a day off. They never, it's, it's ongoing all the time. No, definitely. So what's been a high for your business, would you say, over the last 18 or so months? There's been loads of highs, I have to say, it, and it's difficult to sort of pinpoint one because it kind of it, it is a bit of a roller coaster. So, um, so the likes of when we've kind of um, we work really high closely with uh, Vic from Ecoboodle, that's been a real high. That's been amazing. Um, and doing the lives I've done with with Vic on on Facebook, it's just been incredible. So they've been a real high. Um, the launch full stop was a real high because we've done lots of prep for that ready to to launch back when we when we first started um we've been picked up with by jules so we're a friend of jules so that's a mm -hmm. high as well yes having gone to london to uh um meet the buyers and what have you and become part of one of their partners was amazing um each new product i get a buzz and a high out of because i um uh, but i think it's difficult to pinpoint one thing but i think just generally the tribe i've got they 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 carry me sometimes the fact that actually when i when things aren't quite right reach out to them and they probably don't know i'm even doing this but the feedback i get that they love something and when they get something they post it on on instagram it's just amazing so I, those are constant little highs it's very difficult to pinpoint one particular because there's there's loads of that and and that flips all the downsides when you're buried under paperwork and you can't see the wood for the trees and 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 the workload is too much and and you can't get the right oils at the right time because something's happened or whatever it's those highs balance out 
And there was actually one this week, I know, so I know who it was, and it was on Instagram stories, so it's, it's you know, it's public knowledge, um, but it was Faye from Horseshoe Hearts. Yeah. Put yeah. up a lovely post. She looked blooming gorgeous in it. She, but I, I mean, Faye always looks gorgeous. Faye, if you're listening, I think you're gorgeous anyway. Inside and out, she's one of life's good people. And she was raving about your products, wasn't she? I know, I know, just, and, and, it, and it's those that, I don't think people realize how much they mean to me. I've developed that product and I have made somebody feel good in their skin and confident. And Faye, bless her, has put a selfie up and no makeup, no filter selfie. Bless her, she looks stunning, absolutely stunning. And I'm just, yeah, that, do you know what? No, that money can't pay for that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something that she did on her own back. Um, I didn't ask her to do that. It just, I just find it in my inbox that that's been posted and it's just blooming amazing, I have to say. So yeah, I just, I'm so, so grateful for so many people like Faye that just run with it and, and that's off their own back. It's totally, you know, down to them. She's a, she's a good egg, that one, but I know she well, is. I know when we do like the mastermind live sessions, loads of people pop up with oh what do you think about it and we've had a lot of people say oh i use this and this oh i use barker and slowness and i use this and i love it it's so lovely so what does the future hold for barker and slow obviously we're talking on the day you've just released a new product which i did not know about before i record and press record <laughs> so that's a good start yeah <laughs> um well i've got more products in the in the pipeline so um without doubt we've got more pi more products and just to kind of add to the range um I'm desperate to bring out my cleansing balm um, that won't be out before Christmas. Um, it'll be next year now. Um, and I'm desperately working on some gift boxes, um, something to add to the, to the, to, oh, for, for gifting basically this year. Um, I'm a bit behind on that personally, but um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we will get there. So more products just to add to the range um, and keep growing it. Just keep chugging forward. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I, was, I have so many things I want to achieve. It's just kind of working through the list slowly and surely and just sort of ticking them off and moving forward. So more products without a doubt. You'll definitely get there. You, you've got that kind of can-do attitude. I think that, again, what happened with having to change your name so early on in your business, if anyone can kind of over, shake themselves down, go, yeah, okay, we could fight it, but actually through doing this, it's going to really hinder the business's growth let's push forward let's rebrand i mean branding's beautiful anyway but that's quite a, a, a brave decision and a, a hard decision when you put so much effort and time in but to go yeah actually we need to move forward let's move forward and crack on i, I honestly think that you're, you're definitely one to watch anyway but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will just share the fact that actually so whilst i've put that that image out, out front that we can do this we can do this we can do this not a problem um behind the scenes though uh that i it nearly broke me it was yeah. soul destroying it it was just it was like my heart had been ripped out of everything i'd worked for um, the last two years to try and launch this brand and then we got there and we and then it's literally taken away from you that that hurt and it still hurts now I just there's I'm a long way off recovering from that if you like yeah um because I think that's that's really deep set but um yeah I you, you just you can either roll over and die and let it happen or you can take control and 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 run with it and that's what we've had to do but actually behind the scenes yeah it hurts it really hurts and I think there's that um I felt embarrassed if anything I feel like I've got kind of a bit of egg on my face the fact that why did I even call that in the first place you know um use that name but it's um you have to move on from that um but the reality is sometimes it hurts um, yeah. but you know but then if you don't I think when you're uh, when you have your own small business when you know what well, you've got more than one small business but you do have to take these brave decisions and you do have to push on otherwise you you're stagnant and that's that's not a good place to be is it you sometimes right. take these risks these decisions and sometimes they don't always work out but you learn from it and you grow and I'm not saying it doesn't smart I'm not saying it doesn't sting at all but it's it's kind of part of the evolution. And I think that'll be such a good chapter in your life story to talk about, you know, when, when Barker and Sloan is all you dream, you know, get, getting bigger and bigger, it's all you dream. When you write your book, you go, actually, this is a really useful lesson for other people to learn. Yeah, it yeah. was flipping rough and it was horrible, but actually 
if you know we all have knocks it's it's such a good part of the puzzle it doesn't feel like it now but looking back on it i think one of these things where you'll kind of go that's a really good kind of teaching point um and yeah a, a, an exciting chapter in the old life story as well i think yeah yeah and lots of lessons learned put it that way absolutely now tell us all the places where we can find you online you've been amazing as i expected <laughs> bless you um so instagram big instagram following uh, or we're getting there we're we've, we've, we're we're building our numbers up slowly but surely um so on instagram barker and sloan at instagram um we are also on facebook um with with barker and sloan uh, the website is www.barkerandsloan.co.uk um and actually we have a bit of a Twitter account, although that's kind of a bit dormant. So I kind of need to work on that. But again, that's also Barker and Sloan. So Barker and Sloan, you'll find us somewhere, basically. Um, but we're also stocked at Equiboodle, which is blooming amazing. Um, and if you ever go to Equiboodle or go and speak to Vic, she will tell you all about our range. She's an avid user herself. She loves um, it. She loves she's got it. beautiful skin, hasn't she? She just glows. She's just amazing. Um, she kept her um, boost mist in the fridge, didn't she? In the she summer did. to cool her down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, so cool. full of great tips, is Vic. So absolutely amazing. So yes, we you can find us in Equiboodle as well, which is which is amazing. Um, and of course, and on Jules, if you are shopping on Jules, they're on a friend of Jules on there as well. And I've got some other things in the pipeline with retailers, um, but that's it for now. But the main main thing that comes through our own website amazing thank you so much for joining me today that has been brilliant it's an absolute pleasure thank you very much for having me